It's one of the most popular what-ifs of the last 50 years. What if it had been raining on the 22nd of November 1963 in Dallas? Obviously, there would have been no presidential open-top motorcade. Lee Harvey Oswald, or the Mafia, or the man on the grassy knoll, or the four French hired assassins from Marseille, or whatever other conspiracy theory you subscribe to, would have been denied the opportunity to demonstrate his or their peerless marksmanship. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th President of the United States of America, would probably have seen out his first term and been re-elected in November 1964. Of course, there's another great what-if when it comes to the career of John F. Kennedy. What if his older brother, Joseph Kennedy Jr., had survived World War II? Would John F. have become Bobby, his older sibling's loyal Doberman, rather than senator and president? We are confronted primarily with a moral issue. He was arguably the first conscious political brand, with iconographers like Theodore Sorensen and Pierre Salinger cultivating and honing the Kennedy narrative he could hardly fail. 50 years later, he's a mythic figure. Myth equals branding plus time. But the skein of myth is easily unraveled. For example, he wasn't even the youngest American president. When Theodore Roosevelt took over the office after the assassination of William McKinley in 1901, he was nine months younger than Kennedy. And his credentials as a supposed political progressive don't stand up to too much examination. In 1957, he opposed Eisenhower's civil rights legislation. He persisted when in office with the Democratic Party practice of appointing dodgy judges to federal courts in the South. One such JFK appointee, a man called Harold Cox, once described African Americans as chimpanzees after he had been elevated to the federal bench. During his first term as a senator, Kennedy teamed up with the darling of the Republican right, Barry Goldwater, to try and keep rock and roll music off American radio stations. He presided over the assassination of a supposed ally and fellow Catholic in Ngo Dinh Diem, the beleaguered president of South Vietnam. But he also achieved a lot of good in a very short life. Take just one month of his presidency, June 1963. On the 10th of June, this apparent Cold War warrior made a major foreign policy speech at the American University in Washington, D.C. In a world dominated by ideas of mutually assured destruction, he appeared to extend an olive branch to the Russians. So let us not be blind to our differences, but let us also direct attention to our common interests and the means by which those differences can be resolved. And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. The following day, after Governor George Wallace of Alabama was forced by federal intervention to quite literally step aside and allow two African-American students pass into the campus of the University of Alabama, Kennedy made a largely improvised address on national radio and television, promising equal access to public schools and enhanced voting rights to African-American citizens. Then, on the 26th of June, he made his famous Ich bin ein Berliner speech. The Ein was superfluous a short time after viewing the newly erected Berlin Wall. Today, in the world of freedom, the proudest boast is Ich bin ein Berliner. Oh yes, and of course, he dropped into Ireland for four days on his way home. Not a bad month's work, really. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th President of the USA, was born 98 years ago on this day. <laughs>